Okay, now don't say it yet, because I realize we have a generation gap in administration. <laughs> and so I thought of a second song that possesses the same quality from a different generation. So if you didn't get that one, don't sweat it, although I could tell some of you did. Here's a second song, second chance on this one. I can tell. Uh, <laughs> so if we did the first one, what, what song is that? That's great. Oh, what a beautiful morning from what famous musical? Oklahoma, right? And the second one? I mean, you just like have to do that <laughs> when you're playing that song, right? So. The first one, oh, what a beautiful morning. And you see Curly the cowboy riding his horse in the fields, right? Where the corn is as high as? Oh. Right? And he's singing about what a beautiful morning it is. And you just know it's going to be wonderful, right? What a disposition this man has. So then you listen to that bouncy little tune from Sesame Street. And you think about all those preschoolers watching it. So what kind of day is it going to be on Sesame Street? It's going to be a sunny, great day. I hear you. Right? You know it's going to be that kind of day. These songs, these songwriters, create a mood. And that mood is essential for you to create in a school that succeeds. And that mood is imbued with optimism. Now, I know. I'm not talking about optimism like um, putting on rose-colored glasses. That's not what I mean. Like, I'm not talking about a false sense of studiness. I'm talking about a real belief in the children in your care, a belief that they have tremendous potential and that the school day is going to be good for them, their school career is going to be successful, and they are going to have options beyond high school in the worlds of college and careers because we are optimistic. Now, some people talk about that in terms of high expectations. I talk about it in terms of optimism because I think that better captures the feeling you want to have in your classroom or your school. So here's, now, one day, I was doing, this is what teachers think of us, by the way. I was doing my usual principal thing. <laughs> I was walking around. So my wife says, all you do is walk around and talk to people. That's all. <laughs> she says, for a break, you talk on the phone. And occasionally, you talk by email. That's all you do. Anyway, so I was, <laughs> no respect. I was walking around. <laughs> and I walk in and out of every classroom every day because I believe very strongly that an effective administrator is highly visible so I, and accessible. So I'm walking around, and I'm walking in and out of the classes. And so. I walk into Ann Pocoik's class, and there it looks just as beautiful as it always looks. She's sitting at a little table with kids gathered around her, and um, the rest of the kids are working independently, and it looks just as great as it always looks in Ann's room. So I figure my work is done, <laughs> and I begin to walk out of the room. Now this happened oh, way over 20 years ago, and I remember it so clearly. When I turned to walk out the door, I heard behind me a really loud crash. And I turned around, and there is Anne, flat on her back. The table had given way, books and papers everywhere. Her chair tipped back. You know, you got to worry about head injuries and all that. She's flipped back, the chair's back. And, you know, we're talking 10, 11 year old kids in this room. You hear a big <laughs> pratfall. I'm expecting to hear laughter and carrying on. And the reason this moment has stayed with me all these years is because every kid was out of his or her seat, leaning over. I hope you'll be my volunteer for a minute. Ms. Pacoik, are you okay, Ms. Pacoik? They were so worried about losing their beloved teacher. It was such a testament to what happens when a teacher is optimistic about her children's potential and so believes in them 
that they will do anything to be with her and care that deeply about her. Now, we all read the famous research, remember Pygmalion in the classroom back in the 1960s, that basically, you know, you get what you expect within limits, you get what you expect. And I know there's criticism of the research, but I mean, there's nobody in education who doubts that expectations play a large role. But sometimes when you talk about expectations to teachers, they think you're saying, oh, it's like this mental game. You think that my kids are not achieving because I don't think well enough of them. But what I'm saying to you is if you present it this way, that we're optimistic about our children's future and our belief in them, and we appeal to their basic values, teachers go into this work because they believe in the work. That's the way to appeal to them so that their actions show the kids that they're there for them. 